This is SportsCenter. Hi there, I'm Chris Berman. We got a lot of games to cover, so let's get to it. In our first game this week, we had the Titans stroll away with a 14-point win. In a long-standing AFC rivalry, we had the Ravens pick up win number seven. The Lions lost this one, but will still move to first place in the NFC North. The Patriots drop yet another game and are really struggling on and off the field. Arnold went to the end zone four times and helped his Broncos beat the Texans. We had an interesting free agency pickup of note here. Trey's got the lowdown for us. Trey? All right, Chris. Let's switch gears and talk about players that'll have new homes in the National Football League as free agency continues to play such a huge role in determining a team's makeup. Parsons is on the move as he gets a contract for what can only be referred to as crazy money. Four years, $5.0 million. Brian will also have a new address for a while as he signs a four-year contract with the Patriots. Collier is on the move, as you see, as he accepts a pretty good offer to leave his current club. Three years, $4.7 million. This guy is on the move as well as he signs a three-year contract with the Bears. Chiefs, Vikings. Aguilar calls the signals at the 24-yard line. And a quick rollout. Boy, he has some time. What a bullet! Touchdown! The Vikings go on to win this by the final score of 20-17. to Over in Cleveland, home of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, we had the Browns narrowly coming out on top by five. Up in Seattle Stadium, we had the Seahawks get squeezed out by four points. The Buccaneers erupted for 400-plus offensive yards in their victory at the Edward Jones Dome. The Panthers lost at home and will have to hit the road to meet the Buccaneers. The Packers lost this one and will now fall to second place in the NFC North. Cowboys, Eagles. Donovan McNabb calls the signals at the 24-yard line. And a quick rollout. Boy, he has some time. What a bullet. Touchdown. The Eagles win this one by the final score of 21 to 19. Malone had over 50 yards receiving and helped his Raiders beat the Bears. We had a big trade also of note here. Trey's got the lowdown for us. Trey? All right, Chris. Well, trades aren't quite as common in the NFL nowadays as they are in other sports, certainly. But we've got news to report to you on the trading front nonetheless. Wilson leaves the Raiders and is on the move to the Falcons. And they obviously see that as one of the areas that needs improvement. In exchange, they'll get someone to beef up their roster. Hoffman ought to be a good addition up front as he'll add a little muscle to an offensive line that could certainly use it. In a long-standing AFC rivalry, we had the Bills pick up win number seven. We had a big injury in this one and Trey has the lowdown for us. Trey? All right, Boomer, thanks. In front of you, we've got the AFC Infirmary Report. And as you can see, they were hit hard this week. This guy will be on the sidelines for a while, so this defense will need to do some reshuffling in his absence. It's a torn calf muscle, and the doctors are estimating he'll be out for the rest of the regular season. There's a chance, however, they'll get him back for the playoffs. In front of you, we've got the NFC list. And as you can see, they could form their own mash unit. Becker won't see action for a while, so this offense is going to have to make do without him. He's suffering from a pulled calf muscle, and that'll keep him out for four weeks. Now, on to even bigger news, as you may have already heard. Bradley had to be placed on injured reserve, so he'll be on the sidelines for the rest of the year. Just a key blow to the heart of this defense. Now the big story of the day. Howell is going to be watching from the sidelines for a while, as his injury will deal a major blow to this team. So that'll do it for now. Boomer, back to you. The Colts win yet again this week and keep their impressive streak alive. And in our final game, we had the Giants come away victorious. So let's change things up a bit and turn to a guy that's had his eye on the college game, and that's our own Mel Kuyper Jr. He joins us now. Mel, your work never ends, I know. Believe me, I know better than anybody else. But it's never too early to start thinking about next year's draft, is it? Never too early indeed. And now that, for the most part, the regular season in college football is behind us, we can really start looking back at the guys that have impressed me the most across college campuses this year. Alvarez is one guy I look at who's come a long way the past couple of years to be where he is now. 
192 out of Iowa. And you know, when you look at the tailbacks across college football, and there are a number of good ones, he right now stands head and shoulders above the rest. I really think he can become a premier running back in this league. Sherman is another guy that's starting to make some noise with a terrific senior season. He was a virtual unknown coming into this year, but people are starting to project him to have a solid NFL career. I'm starting to jump on the bandwagon as well. So that'll do it for now, but you can guarantee that the big board is going to see a lot of risers and fallers between now and April. So that'll just about do it. But before we go, I'm going to toss out a few game balls to my prime time players. Each and every one of these men had a week to remember. That'll do it, sports fans. I'm Chris Berman, and thanks so much for joining us here in the Bristol studios. We'll see you next week right here on ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports.